everyone, welcome back to Delta Drive Designs. I know it's been a while since I've posted, I apologize for that. You know, life gets in the way sometimes, I'm sure you all understand. Uh, but here we're bringing a new little project. I've kind of uh, diverted from the primary task of fixing up the M677 and working on some ancillary tasks. Uh, this one particularly is about making a powder coat oven. I've got a small oven, you know, the household oven that I've used for years works all right but it doesn't have the size i need to do like the axles and a few products i'm developing so we're going to build a four by four by seven so let's take a quick tour of the process the ingredients and then we'll start a time lapse of me putting it together so we got um steel studs we got some 26 gauge uh, four by eight sheets that'll be the primary exterior exposed surfaces and then i'm using a lot of powder coating ovens i'm concerned with a heat transfer. A lot of people just take the, the, the uh, galvanized or whatever the sheet metal they're using and screw it or rivet it to the steel studs. I don't like that because I don't want the heat transfer to go from the, the sheet to the stud, through the stud, and out to the exterior. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provide a little bit of insulation by caulking the inner tube, inner, sorry, inner skin on uh, with no rivets, no screws or anything with just a uh, high temperature silicone. Uh, we use silicone all the time in our kitchen. It's good for food, should be fine for powder coating. Uh, this stuff's good up to 500. My oven will probably never run more than 400 uh, unless I do ceramic coatings, but I don't think I'll ever do that. So I'll keep it at 400, so it should be good for that. Um, I'm going to use, rather than using like a fiberglass gasket system, like you, tradition, like you would traditionally see on an oven or a stove or whatever, I'm actually gonna use cheap silicone tubing. This stuff's good up to definitely 400 degrees for continuous use and i think it was like five or six hundred for intermittent like up to like 10 hours or so this thing will never run for more than eight hours at a time um so i think this will be perfect and you know i can rivet it on and then it'll compress when i compress all the panels together uh providing my gasket seal or my uh, my heat my heat seal uh between all the, the the sides and the walls and the ceiling um so that'll be great uh, it was also a lot cheaper than doing the fiberglass. I think it was, you know, I don't know, 50 feet for 15 bucks or something. Um, and then I'll run, I'll actually, I got a PID controller, but I, I decided I wanted a, a longer probe so I'm getting a more accurate temperature assessment inside the chamber. So I'll run that. Uh, I've got some 2,500 watt heating elements, uh, three of those. So I should have about 8,000 watts total for this thing. So based on that, heat up i've got a heat up uh, heating calculator it should take about 20, uh, 35 40 minutes to heat up to temperature and we're good to go so that's pretty much the process oh yeah and i've got um some it's a uh, unfaced fiberglass vats fiberglass is good up to a very high temperature so uh this will be perfect i didn't want to do rock wool because that's just far more expensive than i need and this will work perfect. And it was a lot cheaper. Lowe's was cl clearing this out, so I got it for like 30 bucks for 11 bunks, uh, eight, eight foot bunks, or whatever you call them. I don't know, those things. And uh, should be good. Um, yeah, we're actually downstairs in the basement. This is my sewing area, which we'll get to in a little bit when I reupholster the seats for the Jeep. But for now, it's gonna be my construction for the powder cutting oven because oven, it's really cold outside and the oven's actually probably going to live down here. We'll see how, how the exterior temperature goes, but it'll probably live in the basement. Um, and yeah, so go from there. Let's get you guys set up. We'll do a time lapse, start putting this thing together. All right, stay tuned.
right, just like that. I got three walls, a door, and a ceiling all put together. I got the skin on there with the silicone. We'll let the silicone dry for 24 hours. And then we'll insulate and uh, put the other skin on. So I guess we'll see you tomorrow. And like that, we're back. It's been 48 hours, I'll let it cure a little longer. I'll go ahead and get this stuff unstacked and start putting insulation and new sheeting on it. So we'll get right to it. Stay tuned. Thanks for sticking with me so far. It's been a bunch of work getting this thing this far. It's pretty much there. There's some refinements I need to do. I was kind of in a time crunch, get uh, this together so I can powder coat some stuff uh, today, actually. So uh, I went ahead and fired it up. Uh, it seems to be working. Let me give you a quick uh, walkthrough real quick. So um, as you can see, uh, four by four by seven turned out. Um, Ended up throwing together a quick control system for it. So I've got a PID controller, an e-stop, and a start-stop button. So with the e-stop engaged, I can't do anything. Um, see, I just turned it off uh, and had the door open. So I'll release the e-stop, push in the green means go, red means heat. So it's currently heating, output's on. Well, it was on regardless of the e-stop. It's, it's a mess in here, but it works. Uh, it's a contactor, e-stop. So e-stop drops out the 24 volts going to the contactor. So as long as the e-stop's in, the contactor, the high high voltage can't turn on. Uh, so it's all 24 volt. Uh, you can see the relay is commanding it to be on, but because the contactor's off, nothing will be on. Uh, and then I've got this other little relay up here our contactor uh, specifically just to swap the colors on the light because um, it's a you reverse the polarity on the on the leads and it switches the colors but um yeah that's about it on the control system it works i'll probably add a local disconnect uh soon like the contactor works enough but i would like an actual disconnect switch um just for safety because the cable it's actually going up to my dryer plug um i don't have a 50 amp in the garage so 50 amp on the dryer will do and um so it works pretty well um i have a thermal camera i went ahead and did some thermal on it i'll post it i'm not happy with the seals um they are leaking more heat than i would have liked um so i'll probably upgrade those to a, something different um probably like a fiberglass uh, but they're working okay i mean you know i can touch them it's not terribly hot um but the biggest thing with the seals, uh, the gasket system I devised was 
I didn't account for them not compressing as much as they didn't do. So I was expecting them to compress down to an eighth of an inch, not stay at a half. And it's just a function of like, it's just so much surface area to compress. And so what that did is that the tolerance stack up ended up making this an inch wider than I expected. And so then all my panels didn't fit, or at least the floor didn't fit and the ceiling didn't fit. So here I'm a inch short on the ceiling. So I don't really like that, but I did that. I did do double, double gaskets on it. Um, so I'm at least ceiling on the inner one. That is probably why the roof is getting a little hotter than I'd like. Um, but then the other <laughs> big issue, I screwed up on the door. I should have put it in CAD. Uh, usually when I put things in CAD, I'll catch things like this, but uh, I made everything seven foot tall. And with the assumption that the door would seal on the face of the top and the face of the floor and just kind of swing along the ground. The problem with that is I also made the door seven inches or seven foot. So it means it was four inches short. So instead of it sit, you know, mating on the faces of all four surfaces, it ends up, I ended up being able to save it because I hadn't made the floor yet when I discovered this. It's hot inside. Nope, oh, turn the power back on. Um, so what I did is I just made the floor four inches deeper so that the, the door can swing and sit on the floor. It works, it's not the greatest, but whatever. I can't really make the door taller at this point without scabbing on a piece. I don't really want to do that. And again, I'm in a hurry to get it going, but a little circulation fan, it's cute. I don't know if it'll actually do anything, but well, I'll have to get the IR gun. The thermal camera, I thought it was good up to like 500 degrees, but it seems to freak out at um, these temperatures, so I can't really check for hot spots with that camera, which was a bummer. That's kind of the reason I got it. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Ended up using uh, my dad's company. He had a bunch of theater. He's a theatrical designer and installer. And um, he has a bunch of these three pin connectors. They're good up to like 30 amps. So because all the panels, you know, they, they hold together with these little toggles so I can take it all apart and I can store it easy. That was kind of the main thing. I didn't want this like taking up four by four by seven all the time. If I'm not using it, unclip everything, put it away. But I gotta be able to clip all the electrical. So all the um, the, uh, the electrical has three pins like this, except for the fan. I don't want to do a three pin on the fan because it's like one amp. So if and when I need to disconnect that, I'll just unwire it, or I'll add a plug at some point. Again, I kind of running out of time. But yeah, so yeah, each one has three pin ground wire. Got ground wires all over the place. Make sure everything stays grounded. And that's about it. Um, so appreciate you guys sticking with me. It's a bit of a build, a little more than I anticipated, but ended up spending a week of evenings and a Saturday and Friday. So I'd say probably like 30 hours all wrapped up into it. Um, a good deal. Thanks for watching. See you next time.